Hey everyone, it's Paige and welcome back to my YouTube channel today. Um, this is the mic. You will see it around me at all times. You guys noticed it was like tucked in between my shirt last time. You thought I was like smuggling golf balls. No, it was just the mic. It's gonna be hard to hide sometimes, so just get used to it when you get the sound. So today we're going to do how to practice on the golf course to get better. So I always see people going out there and they don't really know what to do on the golf course when they're trying to work on new things or um, how to actually practice out on the golf course. That's what we're gonna do today. So the first little game or drill that I like to do on the golf course to get better, and everything that I'm recommending now is not for when you are playing uh, a serious match with any of your buddies or if you're really trying to keep score. This is when you're just going out there, maybe you're the first tee time of the day, the last tee time of the day, you're playing by yourself. And I always think that practicing on the golf course is the best way to get better compared to practicing on a driving range. It's just so hard to like take what you're doing on the driving range over to the golf course. So I like doing drills and games on the golf course to get better. This won't hurt pace of play if you're doing it correctly and quickly, but I do recommend going out either probably the last tee time of the day or the first tee time of the day, playing by yourself and doing this, and it's the best way to improve very quickly. So for putting, one thing I really like to do to enforce myself to get the ball past the hole is if I'm short, I take it back a club length. So let's just say I hit this putt, Oh no, I'm short. And then from here, you're gonna go here and then take it back. So that way you get used to trying to get the ball past the hole. Speed is so important. It is great too. So if you're like, say you're right here, obviously you're gonna have a tap in. So if you come back here and take it back, then you'll also be able to work on your short putt. So your three, four, five footers, which are so important to keeping around going. When you have those short putts, I tend see people tend to miss these all the time and it's hard to practice them on the, on the putting green. It's much easier to practice it on the golf course. So it's great too. So if you have, you know, let's say like a tap in, but you left it short, then you're gonna have to bring it back a club length and from there you then get to practice your three footers, four footers, five footers and those are really crucial to keeping around going. I see so many people really struggle with their short putts and so this then forces you to one get correct speed and if you leave it short then you have to take it back which you got to work on your short putt. So this is something that I do all the time and it helps so much. Also one thing so <laughs> You probably heard as I was just filming, I was being catcalled, which I mean, I don't mind. Like, look what I'm wearing, so what? But if you do know it's me, I would much rather you guys come up and say hi and like introduce yourself compared to just like yelling at me from across the golf course. Like, come up, say hi, like I'm friendly. I love meeting you guys, but that's just one thing. I, <laughs> it, it bothers me when I just like get yelled at from across. Come up, say hi, wanna meet you guys. That's the best way to do it. So the next drill I like to do is two balls off the tee and then you play your worst shot. So this is really great because it puts pressure on both of the shots that you have to hit. You get used to hitting more drives off the tee and then you get used to also playing your worst one. And normally it's not as bad as you think it's going to be. So you get a little bit more confidence off the tee, but it also helps you work on your scrambling too. Cause if you are just hitting it straight all day long and you never get to hit it in the crap, then you don't know how to hit those next shots. So this is great for again, getting more confidence off the team, knowing that you can hit two balls in the fairway almost every time. And then if you're not, then you can play and it works on your scrambling too. So I really love doing this drill. You can make it really tough on yourself and hit two balls the entire way and play the worst shot, but I just like doing it off the tee. That one was perfect in the fairway, so let's just try to repeat that. Ugh, ground's a little hard. <laughs> Oops. Okay, well, perfect. Now we gotta play the worst one. <laughs> just ended up the left side, so not as bad as I thought it was going to be, um, but we'll just play it from there. 
So my worst ball ended up still in the fairway. It kicked off of the hill and it rolled back down. This is another good reason why I like doing this because you really get to know the golf course. So I hit that and I thought it was hooking pretty badly, but now I know that the left side's totally fine because everything feeds back down into the fairway. So that one's longer than my first ball, which was dead center in the fairway, but I'm still going to take the one on the left just because of the dog leg and I have to hit it over the trees. I just feel like it's a more difficult shot. So that is why I am choosing that shot um, compared to the one that was a little shorter, but in the middle of the fairway. Totally fine. So I tried to draw that one and I'm just kind of hitting it on the toe, but it still worked out just fine. Okay, so I have 75 yards into the pen, um, playing 77. The wind is, it's not doing really anything and it's flat. So it's gonna hit my stock 54 here. Good little shot there. So you can do uh, one of the drills games that I'm giving you, or you can incorporate all of them into the round that you're playing. So when I'm even doing two balls off the tee, I do the same thing with the putting. So if I leave this short, <laughs> I'm pulling it back. If it's on the low side, I'm also pulling it back. So it needs to be high side past the hole. And again, this is just going to ingrain in your head that you need to get it high side and past the hole. And that's how you're gonna make putts. You're never gonna make putts if it's low side or it's short. So that is why this drill is really good. And I do it all the time because uh, you need to get it past the hole and high side. <laughs> It really helps me to focus in on like high side because I, I read the break sometimes when I'm just playing a relaxed round of golf. I don't go through my whole pre-shot routine and I don't read them properly. So then when I read it properly and I get the speed right, you make putts because again, that's high side past the hole. Easy as that guys. The next game I like to play, and it's not really a game, it's more about course management, but you're gonna have to find a hole, and there's usually a couple holes like this on every golf course. Either a reachable par four, I, I don't know if that was English, a reachable par four, uh, a reachable par five and two, sometimes there's a weird ravine. Um, you have to be strategic on certain golf holes, and like I said, there's at least a couple each round on every single course that you play. So on this one, um, it's a short par four that I could potentially reach. The only problem is that there is some trouble on the left side and also there is some trouble on the right side with just bunkers. And I don't wanna put myself in a bunker and have that awkward 50, 60 yard bunker shot cause it's very difficult. So I'm going to force myself to play safe on this hole. So that is what I'm encouraging all of you guys is when you get to a hole, either a risk reward type of hole or one that you need to be a little bit more strategic on, do the smart play. Don't just bomb your driver out there. Actually think about it. I see a lot of people get to a hole like this and automatically they just go, I'm going to hit driver. I'm going to go for it. This is a birdie hole. And then what happens is they hit a bad shot and they compound their problems and that birdie hole Hole that they thought they were going to you know dominate ends up being a double triple hole so sometimes playing safer is the best way to play a golf course and it's not just these types of holes these are the ones that just kind of jump out to me as being more strategic but this could be an entire round of golf like when you have you know, a course that is a little bit more narrow and you're a little bit wayward on your driver, you need to be strategic when you're playing and you have to think your way through and it takes a little bit more effort to think your way through a golf course, but that's what I'm challenging guys to do is to maybe not take driver, take driver completely out of the bag. Don't even put it in your bag for that day and that way you have to really think through how you wanna play the golf course. I think that's what really separates amateur golfers or pro golfers from amateur golfers is the fact that the pros think their way through 
every single shot. And they have a caddy there, which really helps them to kind of slow them down and to think about it. But a lot of amateur golfers, and I'm not saying you have to take you know, a minute plus to go through all of this, but you have to think through and you have to put some type of effort into playing a golf hole. So that is what I am going to do today. I'm going to hit, oh, these grounds hard. Oh my God, okay, we're in. So I'm going to hit my three wood. I'm hitting my three wood because I feel the most confident with this club out of all of my clubs in the bag. Um, even when I am hitting my driver not so great, I will always grab my three wood. I literally played a year of golf professionally without a driver in the bag because I was so uncomfortable with it and I hated it so much and I lost so much confidence with my driver that I hit punch three woods and I won a Cactus Tour event doing that. And so you can play well by playing smart and playing to your strengths. And when I was playing professionally, my driver was not a strength of my game. So I would hit three woods all day long. Perfect. So it's no stress too. I think sometimes people hate playing golf because it's so stressful. Like it was always stressful for me when I had my driver in my bag because I didn't know where it was going. And I put so much pressure on myself on every tee shot and I hated playing because I just never felt confident. And you have to take your ego out of it as well. Like people would look at me when I was teeing up at professional events and I would just hit punch three. Literally, I would just chip a three wood out there because that was the only way I could get it in the fairway. I got a lot of weird looks. A lot of people were making comments about it. But again, it worked for me in that time and I just did what I had to do to get it around, get it in the hole. Okay, so now we have a 130 yard shot into the screen. The pin is all the way back. I mean, it looks like it's almost touching the fringe on the back there. And so the smart play here, this is what I'm talking about where you guys need to think your way through a golf course is I would normally probably go for it and I would try to fly it all the way back there. And you run the risk if you pull it slightly or if you just hit it really solid, it's gonna jump on you and you could end up in the back rough or in that back bunker, which is gonna be dead because it also looks like the green is sloping um, if it'd be away from you if you are in the back bunker or in the back rough, which is not an easy shot. So the smart play is to go to the center of the green and that's what I'm gonna do right here. So instead of having the number be 130, I'm gonna change my number to be 125, 123. And that's how far I'm gonna to try to land it. And from there, I could be a little short, I could have like a longer putt, but I know I won't have the risk, run the risk of being in that back bunker or I'm taking that completely out of play. So again, that's what I'm talking about, like thinking your way through the golf course. So my 130 is out the window. We do not think of 130 that it is no longer in play. 125 is our new number. Perfect, so I play towards the center of the green, hit exactly where I wanted to, and the distance was right, maybe a little bit shorter, but I pull it just slightly of where I was aimed, and if I grabbed the club that I probably should have hit for the 130 shot, I would have been over the green. So I played it smartly, and now I have a good opportunity to make my birdie putt. Okay, so again, we're focusing on speed, trying to get it past the hole, and also line making sure it's high side. That's very important for this putt because it's breaking pretty hard left to right. So I really want to focus on my alignment here. Go, 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 go. You guys know the drill. Uh, I don't even know, that could potentially be two because I didn't hit a high side, but you know what? It's like right in line of the hole. So I would say that is still, it's not high side, what am I kidding? I gotta move back. <sighs> oh, 
See, it gets a little spicy sometimes. And then when you have like a normal tap in, it's not a tap in anymore and you have to focus on it, but you get to work on your short putts. And that's something that I feel like I'm a very good short putter because I do this game all the time. And also because I have a lot of par putts that are like three, five, four footers. And uh, this game really helps that. So like when I'm playing in tournaments or competitive rounds or when we're betting for money, I feel confident over my short putts because I have to practice them all the time. <laughs> Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about, and this is the most important thing you can possibly do when playing a round of golf, is to keep your stats. This is when you're playing for real, not when we're talking about doing all of those games, which you can also keep your stats for that, but it's not as realistic as when you're playing for real. So I noticed that a lot of people don't realize what they're actually bad at, and I was the same way. I thought I was bad at my irons because I wasn't hitting a lot of greens, but I was bad at that because I wasn't hitting any fairways, so I wasn't giving myself any opportunities to actually hit the greens. Same with like my bunker play. I noticed that my bunker play wasn't all that great, and so then you can really focus in on what you need to work at by keeping your stats and knowing what you're actually struggling with. So I'm going to show you how to, to keep your stats the, the pro way. Um, this is how I've learned to do it. Everyone has kind of taught me the same way. Um, it's the best way to keep your stats and it's super easy. You can then either upload them into the computer, you can put them, um, there's golf apps that you can uh, insert your data, your stats. So I just keep them on a scorecard and that's good enough for me. So I'll show you guys how I do it. So first off, we're going to put name and then I'm gonna keep my score up above. So, you know, let's just say, we started on the back nine today. So I made a four, I made a four, I made a four and then a three. So I had one birdie. Next, you're going to do fairway, green, Putts, and then it's going to be up, down. So I hit the fairway on one, or I, I started on the 10, but um, my first hole, I hit the fairway. I also hit the green. I had two putts, nothing for up and down. Next one, I hit the fairway. I hit the green. I had one putt. Next, I hit fairway. I hit green two putt. Next I hit green and then it was a two putt, which is very boring. So let's just pretend now that on the next hole I made a six, okay? I did not hit the fairway. So then I'm going to put an X for not hitting it and then I'm also going to put left or right depending on where I missed it. So let's just say I missed it left. Let's say I also didn't hit the green. So then I'm going to put an X and then I'm going to put right or left, long, short. So let's say I miss that short, right. And then for putts, obviously I did not get up and down because I missed the green. So it's going to be two putts and an X by the up and down. If you are in sand, you can either just put an S or you can make another column with sand underneath it. So that's how I do it. And then after a while for the entire round, you can start to see, okay, well, I missed my driver five times. Um, I missed five fairways and I all missed them left. So then you know that your miss is gonna be left or right. And then same with the greens too. I missed the green, where did I miss it? I missed all of them short or I missed more of them long. I missed more of them right or left. You're really gonna see how good you are at certain things or what you need to work on. So that's just a great way to keep your stats. Super simple, super easy. After a while, start to calculate them, put them all in. You can do this every single round. You should do this every single round. Just be a part of how you play golf. So perfect example, I was past the hole and also high side, so I do not have to draw it back. Then from there, you tap it in. So I hope you guys enjoyed, oh, enjoyed today's YouTube video on how to improve and how to practice on the golf course. Like I said, I think practicing on the golf course is the best way to get better. And these drills games are 
fun, they make it more exciting, and you improve, and you get to work on different things. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and let me know if there's any games that you guys like to play on the golf course. Uh, I'd love to hear them. So I will see you guys next Thursday.